And I'm Bella. If your cooking skills are stuck in a rut, we're here to help. If your kitchen has seen better days, we'll show you how to fix it. We'll give you recipes, hacks, and the confidence to own your kitchen again. Oh my God! This is Sammy and Bella's Kitchen Rescue. way to Dan and Jana's. Now Jana has an Italian heritage which she really wants to reconnect with through cooking. I love Italian food but first their kitchen needs a whole lot of TLC, yep. their cupboards and drawers, they need the Sammy and Bella touch and a lot of organisation. Yeah so they can focus more on cooking great food. Yeah I can't cook at all, I'm really bad, I burn toast so I can't wait to see what the girls uh, can put together for us. <laughs> and I can cook but I would love to learn how to cook more authentically Italian. All right, I wonder how messy this kitchen's going to be, Bella. We've seen a few bad ones. Oh, hopefully they're neat. I know. <laughs> hello. Hi. No, hello. 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 Show us the kitchen, Thank guys. Oh. Very nice, guys. It's a little bit messy, we know. Let me yeah. check the fridge. No, it's not too messy. No, don't look in there. Don't look in there. Oh, OK. So, stuff yes. left over from the weekend, which was... Oof. Five days ago? Um, okay. Yeah, the weekend was a little while ago, and <laughs> oh, who's going to actually... Someone's actually going to eat that little bit of food? I left it for Dan, but he decided not to eat it, so it's actually his fault. So you're blaming this on Dan? Yeah. Oh, my God, what is going on in here? It's a science experiment. This is Look like a floppy thing. I'm all for no waste, I have to say. <laughs> oh, guys, oh, oh, I think I'm going to... We might just close this for now and deal with yeah. it later. Yeah. Let's put some hazmat suits on and we'll Hazmat suits? Yeah. OK, this is the pantry, I'm guessing. Yes, it is. Is that your only pantry? Yeah. yeah. And we've still got, obviously, all the plates and then there's cups, so... What is that? It's yeah. salt. It's sea salt. He imports all different types of salt. <laughs> that looks like fairy floss. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hang on a second. So, are you trying to save space by combining all of your salts into one jar? Yeah, not a big space. <laughs> I think you just need to buy one type of salt. Yes. I just need to close this. I can't deal with it. I'm okay. sorry. We just... <laughs> we need to rescue this cupboard. But I want to have a little peek inside your cleaning cupboard. Oh, OK. Not really much space in this kitchen. Yeah. So okay. everything's hidden. It's hard to keep a clean kitchen when your cleaning space isn't organised. So yes. we'll just leave that for now as well. Um, and how about your utensils drawers? So this one, I feel, is... OK, up. that's quite neat. neat. Yes, yes. Right. neat. And this is a... Oh, it's pretty messy. You've got knives hanging around. What's this? It's that's a spiralizer. It makes oh. uh, zucchini pasta. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, as an Italian, you eat zucchini pasta, not actual pasta? Mm. Oh, OK, we're going to have to have a little think about that one. <laughs> All right, so it's not as bad as we thought. Gosh, that's Hang on, really what's this? You've been hiding something? Oh, it might have been my dinner last night when I got home late. So on Italian. Kitchen HQ it is, let's go. Right, let's right. do it. Real Italian. <laughs> Hold on to your hats, Dan and Jana. Help is on the way. We'll help revamp their weekly menu, get in touch with Jana's Italian heritage and clear the clutter in their kitchen. Right now, we're taking them to Kitchen Rescue Central for an authentic Italian dinner. Guys, now we're making gnocchi alla Sorrentina, which is a classic dish from Sorrento in Italy. They take ages to make, though, so we've got a bit of a quick version for you. Let's do it. All right. OK, Dan, you're going to help me make the gnocchi, but okay it's that. a little bit of a messy job. We've got over here some leftover mashed potato. Cool. And to that, we're going to add in an egg yolk and some flour. And you're going to get your hands in there and start folding it together gently because what we want to do is have a nice light gnocchi that's soft like a pillow. I'm also going to add in a pinch of salt as you do that. So one of the secrets when making gnocchi is to use as little flour as possible. And you can't always follow a recipe because some potatoes are more wet and some potatoes are more dry. And we're using a type OO flour, which is great for all pasta making. But Jana, I need your help first. Yeah. OK. Do you know how to flick flour? I'm sure I can work it it's out. It's all in the recipe. Big handful. Oh. oh, no. Oh. Are you getting it all over Dan? You don't want me to stop you. Oh. All right, before we move on... Hang on. If we don't clean this up now, this flour is going to get everywhere. So let me just... Give me one second. Hang I'm going to get the vacuum. Back, Sammy, yeah. OK, you guys. Okay. Lucky. I've got the cordless vacuum. All right. Is it working? Oh, hey, actually doing a this. really good job. Look at this. <laughs> Who knew a vacuum could be so handy? You, you have to have the bottom half. I'm 
sorry, babe. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh. <laughs> All right. Okay, I think we can deal with the okay, bench mess yeah. now. Let's get this out of the way. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to wrap up half of this dough so you can cook some fresh tomorrow. So if you can just tear off about half of it. This wrap is one and a half times tighter, so it's going to keep the gnocchi dough really nicely wrapped and fresh so that tomorrow you can make some fresh gnocchi and there's not going to be any dried out bits. So with the remaining dough, what we want to do is probably divide this piece into two. So you don't want to have too much flour because you want it to actually grip a little bit to the bench so that it's easy to roll out and you roll and push it out. Ah, and that will cool. give it a nice long shape. And keep going. And if you are sort of, you know, breaking it in one place, you can just break it and then just do one piece at a time. So what I like to do when I'm making gnocchi is roll all the pieces and then you just cut them all into the little gnocchi sizes. Here you go, Jada, have a turn. Right. Show us how it's done. Just needs to... Yeah, let's just let's just start this one again, Jana. Sorry, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> Might be in your genetics, but it's not working for you today. Listen, if you stuff it up, it's OK. You just pick it up, squish it together into a ball, yeah. and you can start again. So once we've got our sausage shape, we're going to cut it up. So you want to get a knife, dip it in the flour, and then you want to cut off... I like to cut them on little angles like this, so they're kind of like a diamond shape. Cool. And if it starts sticking, you've got to dip the knife in the flour again. So then dust these in a little bit of flour so they don't stick together. And who wants to start chopping another sausage? <laughs> sure. Dip it and chop it. Oh, such skill. <laughs> Same size so they cook evenly. Oh. Hey. That's probably an off -cut. See, I like that she knows that this is not a good bet. So now that we've got some gnocchi made, we want a really big pot of boiling water and it needs to be very, very hot. And what we're going to do is add a decent handful of salt to that. So I like to put the gnocchi in one at a time. So while they cook, the little gnocchis, they will slowly make their way to the top and put some olive oil in the bottom of a baking tray here. When the gnocchi rise to the top, that's when they're cooked and we'll fish them out. Now, remember I said this was a quick version of gnocchi sorrentina. We're using a Napolitana sauce, which is fantastic because it's from the region. It's made from real Italian tomatoes and it's all natural. So this gets poured on like so. Yes, get in my belly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can I have a bit of a stir? Smells good, isn't it? Mm. Oh my god, yum, that's awesome. Sunny, <laughs> stop cheating, it's not ready yet. A little bit splashed here, I couldn't help myself. And of course, a dish from that region would not be complete without some buffalo mozzarella. Yes. So you just want to tear some of that on, put it on top, like so. And a final sprinkling of some parmesan cheese. Yeah. A little bit more. Parmigiana Reggia. <laughs> All right, more Come parmigiana. On. <laughs> Don't with the parmesan. Get it in there, girl. <laughs> I'm going to pop this into the oven and then we can try it. Mamma mia. Yeah. Yeah. Look, so it good. smells so good. Yeah. So cute. Just a little bit of basil on there, why not? Get in there, guys. Try some. And look, what a fantastic dish. You got your hands dirty, but it's a great way to reconnect with your Italian heritage. Mm. Buon appetito. It's amazing. We're here and making a splash with this pasta hack. This is a hack for Dan and Jana to cook pasta perfectly every time the authentic way. The water should be salty like the Mediterranean. Pasta goes in. Adding salt to the water allows the boiling temperature to rise and it cooks it perfectly al dente. Should we have a taste? Mm -hmm. mm, perfect. Here at Kitchen Rescue Central, we're back with a recipe that's simply bellissimo. Right, guys, we are making authentic Italian food today. And do you know what this means? Pollo alla cacciatore in bianco. Um, I don't. No? <laughs> I know I should. OK, I can't teach you Italian speaking, but I yeah. can definitely teach you some Italian cooking. OK. Awesome. You ready to cook? Yeah. All right. Let's do it. So this chicken is a fantastic quality chicken. It's actually prepared with an air chilling method, which means it's chemical free and it tastes like chicken used to taste when your grandparents were young. So I hope Nonna and Nonna approve of this recipe. Now, I don't know if Bella's failed to mention to you, but we aren't actually cooking the whole chicken. We have to cut it up first. Mm. So I can tell them that. Who's going to be doing that? Uh, let's get Jana to do that. Yeah. yeah. Are you sure Jana? Do you want to cut it off? <laughs> I can. I'm a little bit nervous. I've definitely never touched a chicken like this before. OK. Really? No. Okay. So this is what's called jointing a chicken. And it's basically cutting up a whole chicken into lots of smaller pieces. So what you want to do is you want to cut off first the leg and the thigh, which I would normally be called. Jana. You've seen the terror in my face. <laughs> so this is called a Maryland. So what you want to do is cut down and then you can kind of feel
peel towards the end when you hit the bone. Okay. And then you got to butcher it. Are you ready? <sighs> you got to break some bones. <laughs> Don't be scared. It's just food, right? right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's broken through the cartilage, okay. and that's the part that you can cut through quite easily. Now, what we want to do is have a bit of a feel for where that joint is, and then get the knife and cut straight through the joint. Like so. Yeah. Awesome. Next thing we'll take off is the actual wing. So give the wing a wiggle, and again, you'll know where that is, and you can cut straight through it. Okay. You got it? All right, how about you give those two a try? Okay. You got this, girl. Maybe flip it over. This way? Okay. Yep, exactly. Okay. So just cut straight through there. Quite deep? Yep. Oh my god, so I know, I'm scared. <laughs> no, you can flip it now back over the other way. Okay. Well, now she's got to crack it. Yeah, crack it backwards. Mm hmm. Towards, towards Dan. Okay, you got it, cracked Did it. Did you like that sound? Yeah, it's great. Oh yeah. Yeah, love it. <laughs> All right, then grab the knife and you should be able to cut straight through that cartilage. Oh my God, you must have been a butcher in a previous life. <laughs> Seriously, that was perfect. Great. There you go, all right. Okay. So do you want to give that bit a bit of a wiggle? Yeah. See if you can find that cartilage and then cut straight through there. So just yep. down straight. There you go. There you there go. You go. That, you have Stop laughing at me. We've got a little bit more chopping to do. And we're actually going to cut through the bones this time. Um, so what you want to do then is give it another crack. So this little bit is fantastic to use for stock. Oh, thank you, Sammy. And the breast bit we can cut up into another few pieces. So straight down the breast bone, like so. And then each breast into half. Bella the Butcher now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. This is why I never fight with her, I try not to fight her, because I know the skills that she has. I so now that you guys have mastered butchering a chicken, we're actually going to start to pressure cook it. And when you pressure cook, the meat's much more soft and succulent, and we can actually reduce the sauce as well, so it does all those functions. So first of all, we're going to put some butter inside, let that melt. I'm going to get Bella to add in some of the chicken so we can start browning it off. Thank you. And then next we're going to add in our other flavours. So we've got some onion, anchovies, some olives, lots of garlic, yeah. capers and rosemary. So this is all going to go into the one pot. So how long do you see the chicken for? Just until it gets some colour because that colour is actually flavour. So we want to make sure that ends up in the sauce and it's going to make it really delicious. So I'm going to put in the onions, all of that goes in. How good does it smell? It smells mm. amazing. Just give that a little stir. And I think we can go straight in some white wine. It's going to cool it down slightly. We've got some stock as well. And now we're going to close this up and we lock the top. So we're going to select pork and poultry and 15 minutes should be plenty of time. So they'll be ready very soon. Awesome. Right. While that's cooking, Dan, now it's your turn to actually do some work. I haven't been doing anything. <laughs> um, have you used zested lemons before? No. No? no. OK, well, I'm going to teach you how to use this. This is called a string zester. Cool. So give it a go. Essentially, you just want to scrape it, but quite firmly on the outside. Oh, he's actually pretty good. Good job for yeah. big, strong hands. <laughs> Dan, you got to get some juice going. Oh, he's done this before. Yes. Yeah. He's doing better than me with the chicken, I think. <laughs> All right, cool. We have a lemon. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> so you can see how much steam it's actually releasing and yeah. that's helping to reduce that sauce. It's still going to be saucy, but it's not going to be watery. Yeah. And what it does is once it finishes its cooking cycle mm. is it goes into a keep warm function. And now it lets me unlock it. I'll just yes. press the button. And... Oh, that smell. smell. That was insane. <laughs> so good. So to finish it off, we're going to add in that beautiful lemon juice that you squeezed and the zest. We'll give that a final stir through. Oh my god, it looks incredible. Mm. So we're going to serve this up with some roast potatoes, and then all of those juices will soak into the potato. Look at that. All of the sauce gets poured over the top. The best part. Yeah. Yeah, let's yeah, dig in, guys. <laughs> Soaked in all the juice. Yeah. We're here and carving it up with this helpful hack. We're making a traditional Italian beef carpaccio. We're wrapping it in plastic wrap so that we can give it a really nice shape and freezing it allows it to firm up, making it even easier to slice. Now we've pulled it out of the freezer and start slicing really thin slices. 
and a few typical Italian toppings, rocket, parmesan and olive oil. We're teaching Dan and Jana to have their cake and eat it too. Now for my favourite course, dessert, we're making a torta caprese which comes from the island of Capri and the first thing we need to do is melt some chocolate and butter. Oh, how Yum. difficult. <laughs> so we're using good quality Belgian dark chocolate. Can I just, um, yeah, just hang on. I was going to try some, Thank you. of course. Man, I love chocolate. So good. These collets make it really easy to melt in the microwave. So I'm going to go do that and I'm taking this with me. You guys, yeah, I've got a couple more for you. Don't stress. Thank you. So to make the rest of the cake, we've got um, a whole bunch of eggs in here. And to that, I'm going to add some sugar. When you're baking, it's important to remember which sugar has which type of flavour. So a brown sugar has a lot more of a toffee kind of flavour to it. We'll put some of that in. And then the white sugar is more of a kind of classic neutral flavoured sugar. Dan, do you want to go for a whisk? Let's do it. And then we're going to add in some cacao powder and some almond meal. All right, that gets one more whiz. You love whizzing, don't you? I do. Awesome fun. Keep going. She's still eating chocolate. Oh, oh, my God. God. <laughs> do you want to check that? Let me know if you think it's finished. It's nice and smooth, but we're not finished with this just yet because we're going to pour this velvety melted chocolate butter mix Freaking. into there as well. This literally only took about a minute in the microwave to melt. So this is going to go straight in. While I'm doing it? Yeah. Oh! <laughs> OK, top tip, don't keep that going when you pull it out. So let's pour it into our cake tin. So we've just like lined it? it with some baking paper. Sure. So you go pour it in. And Jana, you grab that spatula so you can scrape out every last morsel of that delicious chocolatey goodness. Look at that. It looks so good. Ooh, wow. Oh. Smells amazing. So... Who gets to lick the spoon? I don't know. Too, Jana. <laughs> I better not. I better let Dan do it. Thanks. So, guys, I have one more little trick I want to show you, and that's using baking paper. And then we're going to fold it into squares. So just keep folding it in half and half and half again. And then into triangle. And then what we do is we measure the point of the triangle to the outside of the cake, and that's where we're going to cut. So... And then what this does is it creates a seal on the top of the cake and it makes it rise and cook evenly so it doesn't come up mm. bigger in the middle, it stays nice and flat. All right, I'm going to pop this into our preheated oven and how about a coffee? Yes. Perfect. Okay, let's do it. It looks so Italian. Yay. It's Christmas. <laughs> so we've got our coffee, we've got our cake. It's kind of like Nonna's house on Sunday afternoon, isn't it? Absolutely. All right, let's slice her up. Now, this cake is actually super rich, so I don't make the slices too big. But look at that. Oh, so good. We're taking Jana and Dan on a holiday to her hometown of Sorrento with this lemon spritz. And it's made extra convenient with sparkling water at your fingertips. So, first thing, to fizz. We're going to add in some ginger syrup, some freshly squeezed lemon juice. And some of this lemon zest. Some sugar as well. And give it a gentle mix. A little bit of fresh mint and some extra slices of lemon. And if that isn't a holiday to the Amalfi Coast, I don't know what is. Back at Dan and Jana's, it's time for a kitchen rescue. This kitchen needs a big clean and a big organise. Yeah, so it's a small kitchen, but you'd be surprised how messy it can get. So I've got all the cleaning products to get started. First things first, get rid of this pizza box. No more of that. And it looks like they've left some dirty dishes around. So I'm going to use some environmentally friendly dishwashing tablets to get them all cleaned up. All right, dishwasher is stacked. Now for the environmentally friendly dishwasher tablets. They're all in one. Pop that in. I've pulled everything out of the cupboard, organised like with like into these deep storage drawers. All right, Bella. You get stuck into organising this dangerous drawer. All right, final bits and pieces. Well All done. Right. Up, Bella, before you do that, we've got to give it a spray down. Okay. I'm using the multi purpose spray to clean this drawer, and it's plant based, which makes it really safe. Mm -hmm. Ready for the utensils. Look how beautifully organised they are now. 
done. Okay, so next, Bella, we need to attack this cleaning cupboard. Mm -hmm. So, we want to get rid of all these harsh chemicals. We don't need that. Jana and Dan have a freezer full of chocolate ice cream, and I've got a great hack to stop it from getting a freezer burn. All you do is you grab some baking paper, and you cut off a small piece just to fit the top of the ice cream. And you nestle it in so it's actually touching. And that should prevent freezer burn. All right, guys, so your kitchen is sparkling clean and it's had an organisational makeover. Awesome. Yeah. Are you ready to see what we've done? Yeah. yeah. Go! Hey, oh look at that. Wow, it's so organised. So, Dan, you'll notice that you only have two types of salt. Yes, I can see that. And then we've got all of your Italian stuff up there, your herbs and spices here. You're going to make life so much easier. And you can see these organisers. Really cool. They're on little it. wheels and you pull them out. So it means you can reach anything you want, even if it's the back of the pantry. Maybe we'll have a little peek in the fridge as Let's well. Let's do it. So the fridge wasn't too bad, we gave it a oh, clean up, but so we've much cleaner. kitted it out with lots of new food. Awesome. Yay, thank you. So these are all the ingredients you'll need to make all those recipes we taught you. Yeah. Okay guys, to complete the kitchen rescue, we also got rid of all of your harsh cleaning chemicals with new cleaning products. Hey! Oh my gosh. Safer for you and safer for the environment. Our job is done and the rest is up to you. So make sure you follow in your grandparents' footsteps and preserve those Italian traditions. We absolutely will. Awesome. This is going to be cool. I just can't believe we learned to cook that many recipes in that amount of time. I can't believe you're going to make me knock you for the next 12 months. Oh. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sammy and Bella. It was yeah, amazing. Yeah, that was awesome.